we got told that uh, knowledge is power. That's incorrect. Applied knowledge is power. Amen. And uh, I'm a little bit more of an interactive person. So uh, if you are able to type some stuff in to respond, that'll be great as well. So just getting your fingers ready for that. Um, you know, when COVID started, I was actually in the US when, when our, our, our country started getting shut down in Australia and I was in LA um, around March and uh, flying back into Australia. And uh, one of our implementers, we call them implementers, one of our ministers who, who lead us, who minister with us, the Lord spoke to him and said, um, it's a time of reset, 2020. A lot of people are saying, you know, 2020 has been a, a waste of time. I want to put to you that God says, no, it's a time of reset. 2020 vision was prophesied even before the year 2020, and it just didn't come the way we expected it, but God hasn't been surprised by it. We'll never go back to normal, guys. We'll go, it's a new world. What's the new normal ahead? I want to share, suggest to you, and you're most welcome to, to ask questions now offline. When we finish the presentation, stay, we'll stay on for a little while longer to see if we're really fair dinkum. In Australia, we say fair dinkum, which means, are you really saying what you're saying, or are you just a used car salesman trying to sell me something? Um, all we're saying through this is that we've learned three things. We've learned to survive, adapt, and thrive. And we are thriving through this. We're making, from a financial perspective, we're making more uh, than uh, we have made even before COVID. And that's exciting. Uh, and through some of the things that Matthew has shared and through cutting back some of the things that Narish has spoken about. Um, 3 John 1, 2. You know, a few years ago, uh, I did business. I, I've been studying millionaires for, for decades since I was 20 years of age. Um, one of the first books I learned, uh, read was Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. I'm sure you'd have heard the, uh, of the name. If you haven't read the book, read it. You know, I, I remember sending it, putting, sending a box, package box to Narish and saying, you've got to read this book. Um, and then I started applying what it said in it. Um, and it made a difference. Um, but, you know, I then started studying millionaires for lots of years. And one day I used to read a lot of books. I was a book, book addict. One day my bookshelf fell down and I heard God say, go back to the Bible and I'll teach you everything from the Bible. And he did. And it was very exciting to see what's happening in it. Um, I don't throw aside the wis wisdom of man, uh, stuff that's been said in things like Robert Kiyosaki's book is excellent. I just put it through the filter of the word of God so that I know that the motive is in the right place. 3 John 1 says, Beloved, I wish above all else, all things, above all things, that thou prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And I want to put to you that your soul is your mind. You will only prosper to the level of your mind. Okay. It doesn't say even as your spirit prospers. It says even as your soul prospers. Uh, the level of your thinking. And that's why we ask ourselves, why are some believers doing better than others? Why are some seeming to move in the things of God better than others? Are, are ministers of a higher category? Not at all. Every person who's come to, uh, to understand who they are in God and the creation have equal opportunity, equal value. But it's a level of your thinking that you will prosper to. What's the level of your thinking? Is it weak or is it wealth? And I'm just getting you to think about it. As I said, this is the book I wrote recently. And again, I don't, I, I've come to a point where I'm not into writing books for the sake of promoting it. I don't want it to be a bestseller, but it was required because no one has ever written a book on, on, uh, uh, on two things. One, that tithes is no longer relevant. There's something better than that. And that is that if God gave himself 100%, then 10% is not enough. And secondly, that we get rid of the money distractions, that you can either run from money and be fearful of it, or you can be greedy for it. But there's a third thing that the Bible talks about, which is stewarding well what heaven has entrusted you. Naresh spoke about that at the beginning. He gives us different talents of responsibility and expects us to steward it well. Um, there's a there's a four four week workshop that we'll talk to you guys about at the end. That if you're interested in doing, and if and as part of that, I'd love to offer you this uh, copy of this book electronically because I know some of you are overseas. If you're within Australia, I can uh, you can certainly purchase a co physical copy and I can pass it to you. But uh, this has been a book of 335 pages that covers a covenant that God promised already. Uh, I'm not promoting the book for myself because all the money goes towards Project 61, which I'll tell you about in a few minutes which reaches out to others. So it's not for me to get rich on. Um, there's, there's something in Genesis 26 verses 1, 12 to 13 that God speaks about to Isaac. And Isaac is, the, is, is Abraham's um, son. And God made a covenant to Abraham and said, it's for your generations. Galatians says that we are children of Abraham. 
Here's an interesting thing. In Genesis 26, 1, it says there was a drought in the land. And, poss you know, we are possibly in our generation for the first time, we've heard about depressions and economic catastrophes, but we're probably living it out for most of our generations for the first time. And that's like a drought in the land. And God says to Isaac, don't go anywhere else. Isaac was getting ready to move. And many times we want to shift out of our problems. And God said, don't. I'm going to be with you and I'm going to bless you. And he didn't give conditions. He just said, I'm going to be with you and bless you because of the promise I made to your father Abraham. And I want to put that to you today that I believe a lot of you here are believers. That God is able to be with you and bless you. And Galatians says that we are children of Abraham through faith. Okay, And so how do we go from broke? And it says Isaac then did something and, and faith without works is dead. And what he did was he sowed in the land. He took the seed he had and he sowed and he produced a hundredfold. I'm sure you've heard that. But then verse 13 really excited me. It said, the man began to prosper, continued to prosper, and was very prosperous indeed. Once you get your breakthrough, you don't go backwards. You know, I was getting myself set up by the age of 30 to retire into financial freedom, having all the money I need to go to, to, to live life, because that's what I learned. Um, the rug got pulled out of my beneath me, and by the age of 34, I, I, was, uh, I was going through a divorce. One of the worst things that ever happened in my life. One of the biggest pit moments. And I thank God for Naresh who walked me through some of the situations when you don't see things coming and they come. I had five children from that marriage and I was in minus $200,000 of debt. And by the age of 36, God said, retire into economic independence. I began to travel around the world, preaching the gospel. God restored situations in my life, but I was still in a minus $200,000 of debt. And I learned through these principles to get into breakthrough moments and the breakthrough moments took me into the flow and it's a permanent breakthrough it's not this roller coaster up and down and i suggest to you that that once we get through that we get rid of the distractions so we can live for god today i've uh, paid off my debts um 10 years on uh, the lord said time to get married i said no um i didn't couldn't trust a woman again and then god put this beautiful woman in my life that's sitting here today um, and 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 the Bible says you know when we seek first the kingdom of God everything is added got approved by my brother nourish and 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 by Matthew and all our church you know of, hey you know I'm thriving because of what God is doing and I'm in flow I haven't got to overflow yet but I'm in flow and what flow looks like uh, ladies and gentlemen is where we begin to give beyond ourselves and I figured out that you need a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a year and that's, the, that's all you need in traveling around the nations and helping others. Uh, that's your salary income. That's all you need. It doesn't have to come from your earned income. It can come from all these seven ways that Matthew presented. That's powerful. And anything above that, if you can steward well $100,000, $200,000 a year, and God gives you then to steward a million dollars, you can give away eight hundred dollars to $900,000 a year. Some of you might say that's, it's greedy. No, it's not greedy when you have a, a mark that you say, that's all I need to live off. Right? I don't know if that's making sense to some of you and others of you are going, that's too much to understand. God wants us to steward things well. Luke chapter 16 verse 9 says, if you're not faithful with the things of mammon, with, well, with, with money, that spirit, God can't find you faithful with the things of heaven. And so it's a test. How do we test it? Not run away from it, not be greedy for it, but learning to steward well what God gives us. So here's my question that I, I present in my presentation. Can my income produce without me? I retired out of earned income, and now I use the other seven, six ways that Matthew talks about, and I don't do as much earned income. I choose to if I want to, but I don't have to. I'll be 44 this year. I have nine children. I'm telling you this because it's really important for you to understand that I have huge responsibilities and I'm not a gambler. Uh, Matthew is in his 60s, moving into his 70s, and, and he looks like a 30-year-old, and he's full of life. He's not retired. He says he's retired, uh, and I love that about him. But I'm saying that to you because he's, he's not going to do stuff. He's not a gambler. I've known him for years. I can vouch for that. Narish uh, uh, is the same. He's, not, you know, he, he's in his 50s, and he's, um, he's not a gambler. You know, we're not taking high risks here. We take calculated risks, but it's working. All right, and I hope that will just encourage you. Can my income produce without me? Maybe you've never heard that before. Maybe it's time for you to start hearing some of that stuff because you were never created, as Narish said, to toil. You were created to tend the garden. And even though we're thrown out, 
because of sin, Jesus threw us back in because of belief. And it's whether you believe. According, you, 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 you get what you believe. Whatever you sow, you grow. If you sow, you're not good enough. You grow, you're not good enough. Here's just some things uh, Matthew talked about. And here's another way I create income. Um, there's a trade uh, back in March. This is when COVID started and I'm flying back uh, to Australia. And, and, and every five weeks, we get a return on our capital. And here's some amounts of actuals that we got, 5%, 3%. We get these returns on our capital. Someone asked, can we get more than 0.005% interest? Absolutely. Um, that's a return multiplied by 10 returns in a year. And you get to see that, that, that we get, you know, we get the, 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 the traders keep some of the money and I'm okay with that. But I get to get a 3.3% return every five weeks on my capital. And um, man, that's pretty good, better than the banks. And then I found out that the banks do this with our money. And, and Narish didn't say this, but he, he, one of the things he teaches in the course is how to beat the banks, whip the banks, he calls it, that they're, because they're, they're, they're rooking us from our money. That's hard-earned money that you've got in there. Um, this is in April. Multiply these returns by 10 times, and that's how much return we get a year. We say 20 to 40%, 30% on average, but if you look at things like this, DS, 6.9%, that's close to a 70% average. That's pretty good. That's in May. That was one of our trades. Now, again, I mean, I'm an investor. I'm not a trader. I don't have to learn new stuff here. I'm not talking to you about practically how to do stuff that's going to take up your time. You've got to learn a new skill. Nothing like that. You've got to tick some boxes. Uh, you know, smart men and women sitting here that the Spirit of God is telling me about. Don't put all your money in. We only invest money that we're willing to risk. But we're getting some really good returns, guys. And this is for anyone and everyone to share. One thing that you'll learn from the three of us is, and you'll notice, is we don't withhold in any information that's good. There's enough for everyone. This is June. Here, here's the thing that's excited me. In 18 months, I've managed to double my capital and take away all the risk. Why? Because I pull out my capital, and what would normally take three years and a bit, I was able to do in 18 months through some new strategies, which was higher than a 30% return. And I've now created a passive income of 2 k that's replaced a junior worker. What's next? I mean, I've done that in 18 months, listening to Matthew. Matthew's one of my mentors. You know, again, we mentor one another. We learn from each other. Uh, Narish has helped me to save a couple of, nearly $200 a month off my home loan. Doesn't seem like much, but that's a lot. Because that's thousands he was talking about that I'm saving. And eventually it's going to move to the next step with, with him when I'm stabilized with that to save tens of thousands and then hundreds of thousands and I want to pay my loan off as quickly as possible. How exciting. Because I went from minus $200,000 in debt, never thought I could come back again and recover and God recovered me and then caused me to steward a new property and I'm finding ways to steward it well without pressure. We want to share with you that you can do the same. Does God talk about money? Yeah. I. By the way, I hate talking about money. Well, I used to. Because it's not something in my ethos. My heart is to reach souls for Jesus, to live my life in full. Uh, I love being around my children, my wife. Love living life the way God has planned for me. But uh, but there was a requirement, and, and, and a lot of the people around me, my mentors said, you need to come back out of retirement and teach people about wealth, especially to the church, because believers don't know how to do this. We have a very poverty mindset, and it's a spirit. Or we manipulate people into giving, uh, we call it tithes, and it's nonsense. Not required. I'm minister, so I'm apologizing on behalf of ministers. And if you want to have an argument about it later, I'm more than happy to do it offline. Um, but tithing is not from God. There's a new covenant in place, and there's something much better. Everything belongs to Him. How dare I give Him protection money when He's given me all? 100% belongs to Him. The more you give, the more you steward, the more you get. Simple principle. So here's some seven steps, guys, that I want to share with you on. That will just help you. And I'm sorry if I'm being very blunt, but I'm just uh, realizing that, you know, let's get down to some business and it's exciting. Here's step one. It is your God-given right and responsibility. I call these your royal rights and responsibilities. You have a right and you have a responsibility to create wealth. Matthew spoke about this scripture, Deuteronomy 8.18. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to create wealth. God would not ask us to do something that he thinks is evil, Right? Money is not evil. The love of money is. Money is, has no conscience. And then the reason 
Because I'm giving you this from scriptures, I'm a big believer of the word. What's God's opinion? Because God had to change my opinion on stuff that I thought was God, and it wasn't, <laughs> right? Um, we got taught things like God helps those who help themselves. That's not in the Bible, folks. I didn't know that. I was trying to do it all by myself. He blessed, I mean, I love uh, Genesis 1, 5. Genesis 5, 1. Uh, in the day that he created us, he blessed us. You got blessed the day you got created. He said to Jesus, my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, and Jesus had not even performed one attribute of anything. Our belief makes us children of God and we get royalty in it. And that's exciting. Number two, these are some seven principles that I live by. It is your God-given right and responsibility. It's a right and a responsibility to live debt-free. Romans chapter 13 verse 8, Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. As I said, even though I'm a minister, I, we ask no money from our congregation. As ministers, we do not leave, live as Levitical priests. We live as, live as sons of God. Galatians 4, 7 says, We are no longer slaves, but sons of God. John 15, 15, Jesus said, I no longer call you servants, I call you friends. And so I've got to believe what God says, not what man says. And this helped me get out of my minus $200,000 of debt. Huge amount. Didn't think it was ever possible. Part of it was my fault, part of it was not. But I took responsibility for it. Number three, it is your God-given right and responsibility to not be poor. Deuteronomy 15, 4, there should be no poor among you. For the Lord your God will greatly bless you in the land he's giving you in a special possession. You live from the promised land or are you trying to get into it? Because God's already provided the provision to live from it. And I know that was scripture in the New Testament. People would often say to me, but Jesus said there will always be poor among you. Yes, in the world there will. But as a believer, you may come into the kingdom of God poor, but you don't remain poor. That is not God's ethos for us that's not god's culture for us and the focus is not on money but today is about creating wealth so we are talking about money hope you're okay with that we're not making money uh, you know our master but it is our slave and it's a good saying that matthew would often say uh, quote that uh, money is a is a poor master but an excellent slave number four it is your god-given right and responsibility to lend and not borrow and that's what uh, Naresh talked about. You know, let's get out of our debts quickly. I didn't want to take my new uh, home loan debt, but go, you know, I said to the Lord, "Don't want to. I don't want to be borrowing." And He said, "I'm teaching you some new principles through this." And it was it was such a miraculous way God did it because I was not desperate. We are content in all things. There was no des desperation to have a new property, but we had to steward something well for the next step. What's God stewarding in your life? It's not too late. Some of you feel like. Uh, it's too late for me. I'm too old. Um, the, 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 the ship sailed. It's never too late. What the canker worm has, has, has taken, God can restore. That's, his, that's his, his, his word, and I believe on his word better than what the world says. Number five, it is your God-given right and responsibility to be a good steward of money. Luke 16, 9, here's the lesson. Use worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. If you are faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with the greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, I hope you're getting this. This is what the Lord says. No one preaches this. Don't hear preachers preaching this. Who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? How exciting. Number six, it is your God-given right and responsibility to help the widows, orphans, fatherless, and the needy. James 1.27, pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. And finally, number seven, it is your God-given right and responsibility to be time-free, resourced and available to fulfill the Great Commission. I, I love this one. That's what I live by. I am free to do what God has called me to do. Money distractions are not a problem anymore. I know how to turn the tap on and off of income, and I want, we want to share that with you today. 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 20, And all of this is a gift from God, who brought us back to himself through Christ, and God has given us his task of reconciling people to him. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them, and he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. 
We've all been given the same message, ministry, to be Christ's ambassadors. But many times we don't have, money is a distraction, paying off our debts, living, having to uh, pay rent, responsibilities. They become distractions when we, we don't know how to, uh, they take up our time and they take up our peace sometimes as well. But what if God has a different solution to this? And he does. We've been living testimony for this. So here's the seven again. I want you to just look at it and say, what's, what's one of those that's really challenging you today? Resonating in your heart that you feel the Holy Spirit is saying, yeah, one, two, three. What, wh would you type a number in the text box to say, this is really just, you know, right? Yeah, this is really speaking to me. God's really speaking to me through some of this stuff. And it's really resonating with me. Um, you know, that, that, that would be really good to just hear from you. Thank you, Ma Matthew 7. Awesome. Yeah, some questions which I'll answer at the end. Uh, thank you, Abil, for asking that great question as well. Good to hear, see some uh, chatter there. What, what's, what's resonating with you? What's resonating with you? And some are saying seven. Some are saying two. Yeah. And why it's important is that I'm a big believer of the prophetic just as much as the word. The spirit and the word together produce life. And I'm a big believer of prophesying over our own selves. And when I start to speak and resonate with God's word and I start to let my mind catch up with my spirit on God's word, then things begin to happen. And, and some people might say, well, I'm not good enough yet. I've got to get better with God. He, he isn't waiting for you to get better. He, because if you could get better by yourself, you wouldn't need him. All right? He wants us to come to him as dead. He's not reprimanding us. He's, he's saying, I've paid the price. Come. And, and so when we put these numbers down, you're prophesying over yourself that these things are really touching my heart. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mahan. Number two, thanks, Ramesh. Number seven and six as well. Thanks, I will. Number seven, what a blessing. So I asked you the question at the start of my presentation. I'm asking it again because when you ask a question, the answer comes. The book of John 16 says that the Holy Spirit leads us in all truth. He knows all things. And I started asking this question decades ago when I was 20 years of age and I haven't stopped. And it's amazing the answers that come. And it's amazing how it's all beginning to produce fruit regularly. Like I just showed you one way of producing through the, uh, the Forex trading that we do. And if anyone's interested in that, please come talk to me or Matthew after. We're more than happy to, to, to introduce you to it and, and tell you more about it. And you make decisions for yourself, but at least you can't say I wasn't empowered with information to give me back a much better return. I've been in that for four, four and a half years. Matthew's been in for close to six plus years. We've never lost any money. It's a high risk, but it's in what we call a low risk in the high risk category. Can my income produce without me? Well, these have been my wealth steps and maybe it will help somebody uh, today. One, number one is I changed my mind towards wealth as I hope you are possibly having to do today because you wouldn't be here if you were okay with what you needed. And some of us are at some really good levels, but we want to go to the next. I'm always learning more. I always want to grow more, grow more, and I hang around those who, who are going to teach me something. Uh, start with faith if you have nothing. I often say faith it till you make it. I started with nothing, minus $200,000 in debt. I was doing really well, and I plummeted all the way down, and I started faithing it till I made it. I traveled around the world with nothing. Till today, I don't know how I did it because I didn't have handouts. But God is always faithful. Number three, create a plan to produce income without capital. And I'll show you how you can do that towards the end of my presentation. As I said everything's practical. I'm not talking theory here just to bump, up your, bump you up or boost my ego. We want to say that this is possible for anyone to do. I, I coach people in this and we see enough fruit. Very exciting. Number four, use your capital to invest into a mentor. I start businesses without capital, and if I have capital, I use it to invest in a mentor because I learn better from mentors and quicker. Matthew, by learning with him, I, I learned how to double my investment in 18 months and not the normal three, month, three years and three months that would have taken through compounding and some other principles that he taught me. I, I'm excited. Number five, make money, produce money. How do you do that? Let it have babies. Invest by investing a portion of your uh, savings in high-risk categories that 
are low risk. Number six, buy positive cash flow properties. Don't buy properties that are gonna make you lose money and you're hoping in the long term you're gonna get a capital increase. Start from the beginning. My properties are always producing positive cash flow. If they're not, I choose not to buy it. Number seven, make your house pay for its own mortgage. How awesome is that? I, I was able to create a strategy where my rental property that was paid fully for was an old former house, became a rental property. I moved it from creating $400 a week to four times that amount of money, uh, producing four times the amount of money by renting it room by room rather than just changing strategies and it pays for the mortgage. Is that good or is that good? I'm not under stress. I'm not under duress. And during COVID time, when some of it went down a little bit, I just found another way to create income. I just, um, I just closed the deal that where someone uh, is willing to trade thirteen thousand dollars with me to to train them on some things. It's part of the products that I sell, right? Not every, it's not for everyone, but it's for someone. So there's always ways to generate income through different ways, and I want to encourage you for that. I'll tell you why we do all of this. Number eight, and this is not. Step eight after you've done the other seven. This is just give, 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 so, so, so. Learn to give and learn to sow. There's a difference. Grain to eat, bread to eat, sorry, and grain to sow, right? Don't take all your seed and make it into food to eat. Sow some as well. Sow it into good ground. Number nine, move into wealth creation that produces double, five, 10, 30, 60, 100 fold. I was always excited at getting a percentage return as a businessman. And I began to realize that that's not God's plan. His plan is for multiplication. He said, multiply on the earth. Everything multiplies. And so I started looking at how wealth can multiply too. How can I leave a legacy for my children, my children's children? As I said, I have nine children. I love each one of them. They're highly valuable to me, highly important to me. And each one has a different personality. What do I leave for them? And how do I teach them to steward well as well? The goal is to build it with the, with the mind to give away 80 to 90% of your income and to live on 10 to 20, which would be more than enough. As I mentioned, 100 to $200,000 a year is more than enough for most people to live on, if not everyone. Can, what if you can steward more and give it away? That's worthwhile. Why do we do all of this? Because of this statement, the value for soul that none should perish. I've got many testimonies. This is one of them. Last year, I was in Sydney for a conference. I was speaking at a, at a large summit, business summit, and uh, went in there and um, met this lady the night before. We were having dinner together with other, the other speakers, and it was a Christian summit, so everyone there was a believer. Didn't know that this beautiful lady called Wendy was actually not, not a believer. Came from a Buddhist background, sat across the table from me having dinner, and, and everyone's ch chatting, you know, Christianese language that we like to use when we're around each other. And, and she was looking really downcast and really sad. And I found out she was one of them who looked after the, um, the, the, the facility that we were using. And uh, so I just spoke with her, I said, What's wrong? You're looking a bit down. She goes, My energy is low. And I said, Well, can I release some of my energy into you using her language? We learned to use the language that people understand. And she said, yes, please. And I said, give me your hand. And I just spoke with her. She said, you got such a nice smile. She said, you've got such a uh, aura around you. And I said, well, I've got this greatest energy source that I've found that I would love to release in you. So held her hand, spoke to her for 20 minutes about her beliefs, about what she, what she had, her desires, her heart, her dreams, what she felt she was created for. By the end of 20 minutes, uh, she was feeling completely different. Her face had changed. She's, look, this is the smile that happened afterwards. Uh, I wish I had taken a photo of what was before. Um, but at the end of the night, she had given her heart to Jesus because I introduced her to the greatest treasure that we ever have. And without him, we can do nothing. With him, all things are possible. The next morning, um, she introduced me to another friend of hers who was a facilitator there who had come from a Persian background, Muslim background. And uh, this is my one of my sons and my daughter. And we moved in the prophetic together with her. My son is 13 today, uh, this, this year, and this is last year, and my daughter is 15. Um, so they were 12 and, and uh, um, what, 12 and 14, 11 and 14. My son is 12. Um, and it was just in, exciting to see that after about a year, after about, uh, sorry, an hour, two hours with this beautiful girl, she gave her heart to the Lord. We spoke to her from her language. We said, we're followers of, of Nabi Isa from the Quran. She understood that. Nabi Isa is Jesus. Started speaking to her about how awesome God is. And that if you want to know more, the Quran says to, to, to hear what the Bible says about him. 
and 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 I, I I wasn't we don't put down religion because religion is the worst uh, enemy, including Christianity, to God. God didn't bring religion; He brought Himself. And so, why do I do what we do? Because I went to Sydney on my own back. They asked me, "Would you like us to pay for you to come and speak?" I said, "No, I will pay for myself." And can I just make an offer there? And they said, "Yes." But this is more valuable than any offer I made. <laughs> How many of you would you would agree? Two souls that went out of came out of destruction into a place of hope. Uh, New Year's Eve, my wife, um, myself, and our team, part of our team, we go out. We don't. We don't. Rather than partying and enjoying our own family and friends, we we say let's go out to the streets. And we went out to Melbourne City a couple of years ago. And Matthew, I think, was with us as well. And this is part of our team. And that night, we just went and gave hope to people and asked them if they want to receive Jesus. Clean heart, clean start. We had about 420 people give their hearts to the Lord. That was powerful. Value for soul that none should perish. This is why we do what we do. Before COVID, every two weeks, we go out to the skate park. This is our family, church family. And those who are willing to go out there and just love on people. Just love on people. Uh, tell them about Jesus. We see so many coming to acceptance of Christ. A couple of years ago, I was uh, given a phone call. This is an uncle called Uncle Bala, my dad's best friend. Um, knew me growing up in Africa, in Nigeria. I hadn't seen him for 30 years. He's in Canada, in Toronto. And uh, got a phone call being told that he's about to die. Uh, he's uh, come from a Hindu background, has not received Jesus. His daughter called and said she's, she wants to see him in heaven. She was, uh, she'd given her heart to Jesus, and it was important for her, her to see her father. Her mother had died from cancer. A few years earlier, and 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 this man is a staunch, was a staunch believer that would literally yell and scream at anyone who wanted to tell him that Jesus was the way, and that's okay. He's allowed to have his opinion. Went to see him, took me a few uh, an hour or so to convince him that I was who I was because I'd grown up since he'd seen me. I was about seven or eight years of age when he last saw me, and then he was a forty-four year old man or forty-two at that time, standing in front of him. Um, spoke to him, prayed for him. Said that he, they said he wouldn't make it for a few, uh, a few more months, and that was it. Um, this is two years ago. I went back two days later and, and spoke to him again, and he gave his heart to Jesus. Same camera, same weather, two days later, frame, same angle. Do you see the difference? I haven't, I haven't photoshopped this, guys. You see what Jesus does for us, the hope. I take it for granted sometimes, and I remind myself by looking at these photos how important the value for soul is. That's why we do what we do. I want to encourage you. Um, we were in Kenya last year, women's prison. We were able to give out some blankets and some much needed, you know, they're such thin blankets, but they're better than nothing. It gets really cold in Kenya, down to four degrees centigrade. That's my wife and that's myself and my uh, one of my team members, Ryan, and a few of our other team members around here. And we went to women's prison. We've had the whole of the women's and men's prison in Kenya open up to us since then. And uh, they needed sanitary pads, pads just recently. And we were able to help them with that as well. And we're creating a solution towards uh, recy uh, recyclable, reusable sanitary pads that we can send out to all the prisons. And uh, so, you know, one of the workshops that people jumped onto, which I'll tell you about shortly, was able to pay towards helping towards these things. Um, here's how they are grateful for us. And I want to just play this little clip for a few seconds. <laughs> Now that's just a few minutes. They 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 rejoiced. Uh, you see some infants there. Um, those who come to, into prison, uh, if they have children under the age of five, they have to bring those infants with them. Um, I tried to speak that day, and, and Ryan tried to speak. He was a token white guy from Australia. Um, they weren't listening. My wife got up and spoke as a woman, and they began to listen. She said, there's hope for you. Don't worry about your past. And, they, and, and a few of them put their hands up and said, I want to give my heart to Jesus. I want to start afresh. The value of a soul that none should perish. That's why we do what we do. gives us freedom to travel around the world to do what we want to do. What has God called you for that has been stifled? because of money and can that be changed 
So here are my three simple steps that I have. I have it up on my back screen as well that I use from the scriptures that I keep reminding myself on creating wealth. Make money from nothing. Make money, make money, and make your money invest multiples. I want to look at the first one, make money from nothing, and I want to tell you how to create business with little or no capital in five highly effective steps that keep on multiplying. Would that help anyone? I think it would. I think it would take you out of that idea of just earned income and look at the possibilities, just one. Matthew's talked about investments. Now he's talked about cutting, trimming the fat off uh, your, your, your current income, that you can become a millionaire just with the money you have if you trim some of the fat off it. Um, I want to look at this, this whole idea of how you can start a business without capital. I've done it for decades. It's worked. I've t t taught it around the world. People in Africa, in India, um, in Canada, in US, in, in Australia, in just different countries, it works. These are just five simple steps that you can use to create an income from nothing. I've started over seven businesses this way, guys. And, and, and I'll give you some testimonials on this, not to prove that I am better than you, but to say anyone can do this and it's never too late. These are the five steps. Choose your product or service. Discover a niche area and, and, perfect, and the perfect customer through research. A lot of people forget to do research and they think that something's a good idea and it might not be the right idea. Add value to make your product or service stand out from the competition. I don't have a problem selling anything to anyone because I add value and I give so much value that they want to buy from me. Marketing is education. Learn about marketing and sales. Marketing is not, is not trying to convince someone to buy something that they don't want to do. You know, every one of my customers that I have in different streams of income that I create want, they, they have money ready to exchange and they're just looking for the right product or service. So we don't force anyone. And it's exciting because in the old days we got taught that you have to try and convince people, manipulate people's emotions. That is, that's not from God. But I'm sure some of you had money at one time to buy something and you're looking for the right product or service. What about if God's given you a thought, an idea, a product or service, and you're sitting on it and you're, 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 you're denying people from, from that product or service that they want, that they're ready for, but you're also denying the stewarding that heaven has given you. Finally, customer service. Customer service. Really important. Here are some, here are some actual things that came out that I used this for. I, I set up a business called Student Care Australia back 20 years ago. I had that time had lost my job, lucrative job in the bank. I was, I come from an engineering background. I was a pro, uh, robotics engineer and then I was a, uh, working in the bank. Um, and I was uh, earning a very high income more than my, as a contractor, more than my, um, my manager at the time. Had three children at that time, twins and an older girl. And I lost my job when the 2000 uh, bubble broke. How I many of you remember that millennium bubble that everyone said the world was going to stop? It didn't. Uh, and I, I desperately needed an idea. I got an idea, started without capital, generated $200 profit on a, on a property where I basically took a house and um, subdivided the rooms, furnished the rooms, subdivided the house, furnished the rooms and rented it out to students around the university area. I did some of my research and found it was possible. And then I set up eventually seven houses in the first 10 months and then started having about 15 properties generating thirty to forty thousand dollars a month how many of you think that's pretty good i think it was okay possible without capital okay i used my talent of being a in the it industry and being a robotics engineer and understanding programming to set up a uh, future future tech business solutions which is uh, finding solutions like i call it the bridge connector model ended up having two clients there were major university education industries, two universities in, in Australia, Melbourne and Monash University, and started producing programs that paid me dividends for 10 years. Every year we'd have support of over $10,000 per program. And that was a great thing. So I worked hard for the first bit, got it all done, and then for the next seven to 10 years of the life cycle of the software, it, I, I, I got paid. Now I didn't do all the work. I don't like programming. I'm a people's person if you get to know me well. So I got a programmer, he got 50%, I got 50%. But how many of you know I would have made 100% if I took the project myself, but I used to do five projects at a time and take 50% of the profits, making me get 250% more than me trying to do it on my own. 
So you can find others to do things. And my programmer just did much better job than me. Why do I share testimonies? Revelation 12, 11 says we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony. What about others? You saw Ryan earlier today in Africa. Uh, I just showed you a year ago with me in Africa. Ryan is an ex-kickboxing Victorian champion. I've written him, about him in my book. Um, he was broke when I met him in 2014. And then I helped him through a concreting idea. He started without capital, using the same principles I teach. Within six months, he was out of debt. I remember one Christmas, he called me up and said, I've got a surplus of $10,000. What do I do with it? And I, and I, I, that's an exciting problem to have. Imagine you calling me and saying, you know, I've got an extra $2 million sitting here today from my income. I don't know what to do with it. Christmas time as well. Amazing. He's just finished off his concreting. That's him in Africa on the right-hand side uh, with Ilsa. Uh, really got on well with her. And uh, he's now moving into business coaching, which is really exciting for me to see him journey. This is my beautiful sister, Rubika, same mother, same father, um, started a cake business. She's a microbiologist, mom and missionary, um, and uh, she converted a hobby into a business, no capital. Last year, took the business international, two years ago, actually. Uh, she doubled the income within six months. She just landed uh, coaching. She's moved into coaching. She just landed a... a, a $1,200 coaching um, opportunity. How many cakes would she have to make to do that? She started with something and she's moved into something else. And it's very exciting to see her journey. She's a mother of four children. He is one of our implementers. When we first met him, Matthew will attest to this. He's an Anglican minister in, in Australia. When we first met him and told him about all, all the stuff we do, he looked at us funnily. So you guys are crazy. We looked at all the potential within him because God showed it to us prophetically. And we said, what are you doing about it? And since then, he started believing on what God was saying. He's, he, this hand cross he's been making for 20 years, he started producing it as an income now. He's written a book called I'm a Son of God. Absolutely brilliant. Can't recommend it more. That it's, it's the pinnacle of the key to every other. It's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the key of all keys. Understanding your identity. He's since sold and bought property. He's got into Forex. He's producing income where he doesn't feel like he doesn't know what he's going to do when he retires as, as a priest. Because at that time, he didn't. He lived on a very measly salary. So, before I finish my presentation, if anyone wants to know, there's four ways you can set up a business without capital. One is turn a hobby into a business idea. Second is solve a problem to a niche group. Third, change your career into a business. And fourth, the treasure within you to transform others through coaching. Here are four ways that work. I use the fourth way because that frees up my time as well. But I've done everything in the other ways as well and taught others to do the same. This is quite possible to create $100,000 to $200,000 income a year. It is possible to get a plan ahead, but you've got to start with a little. You know, as they say, uh, a journey of a thousand miles starts with what? One step. Nourish said, little drops make the mighty ocean. All right, you've got to start somewhere. Information is not powerful until you've applied it.